Mother Nature, in all her glory and all her fury and rage, there's still beauty in every instance. Sometimes you have to persevere. You have to weather the storm to ever get to the rainbow. Stick with me, folks. You're going to enjoy this episode of Cowboys and Coffee. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp and welcome to what? Cowboys and Coffee. We pick out a picture there in one of the cookbooks that Shannon's taken and we tell you the story behind the picture. And be sure and check the previous episode out because whew, it is talking about early in the morning and dark and coffee and fire. And while we're speaking of coffee, let me just go ahead and pour y'all a cup. Done made you some and brought up here today. The good Lord blessed us really good last night. We got a half inch of rain. The first time we've had some in forever. How much do you want? A little more than that? Well, you're gonna have to quit about there cause I'm gonna have to drink something. Now this picture we're talking about, we took out of our new cookbook, Comfort Food the Cowboy Way. But we're gonna walk you through some of this weather that we've seen. I'm also gonna give you some old traditional ways of predicting the weather from a camp cook. There's a lot of times that we don't got one of them cell phones that you can pull up there cause there ain't no signal thing. I'm gonna call Jim Cantori right now and I'm gonna find out what the weather forecast is out here today in the middle of 300,000 acres. I ain't gonna happen. You know, this picture we're gonna talk about today is one of the most majestic things that I think you can see in the wide open spaces. Something as God has created and he used a lot of colors on that paintbrush. He did, and he painted it there in the sky for us to get to witness that beautiful rainbow. Ooh. We had been in such a dry place in that first camp that we was at and we moved over to what they called the Bronc Pens. And the camp was up there on top of this sort of canyon ledge there to where all the pens and everything else was down in the bottom. And the old wind and dirt had blowed so bad for three days. And when we hooked up the team and went to moving camp and we got over to this place, I can remember thinking, Lord, just let us have some good days. The next morning when I stepped out of that teepee about 2.45, I reached back inside that teepee and got me a jacket because there was a cool north wind that was a blowing there in June. And I can remember as I built that fire thinking to myself, there's moisture in the air today. As we cooked breakfast and everything began to go on and them cowboys was getting around there and I remember telling them, you better take your slicker today, boys. I remember the little coffee trick. I poured it in the cup and when you pour coffee in a cup and the bubbles go to the outside, fair weather is there. But when the bubbles stay in the middle, there's a low pressure system somewhere out there that's fixing to affect what you do. That is one of the weather tricks that I learned many years ago, and it's never failed me. It started raining about 10 o'clock that morning. Just an old cold, drizzling rain, and the wind was out of the north about 35. And I remember when them cowboys come back up there to eat lunch that day, they'd all gathered up around that old fire, and I mean, they had shivered. And there's one young fellow there, and oh, how we loved him. Everybody called him Crouton. And his old teeth was chattering as he sat there by that fire. And I said, Crouton, you, you doing all right? And he looked at me and he said, Kent, nobody likes a soggy Crouton. And I mean, he was drowned. And then it cleared off right there before supper time. Folks, that rainbow went from one side, plumb across to the other side. At one time, it was in the teepee. I mean, it was the brightest thing you ever seen in your life. All the dirt had been washed from the sky. The sun was shining just right to hit all them colors that were on that rainbow. In terms of taking the picture, diffused lighting is huge. Anybody that takes pictures loves diffused lighting. So we had that, which was great. But then also, um, there were those breaks in the clouds where that sun would shine through and really make all the colors pop. And you know, after rain, all the greens and all the colors just pop more. Um, and I, I took so many different shots because again, it was one of those, this is so gorgeous, I have to capture it as much and as best as I can. Some of the different angles, you know, it was, it was hitting a teepee and it was almost like, you know, the um, pot of gold, it would hit the other teepee or it would hit the wagon in a teepee. Different colors of, or different types of teepees that the cowboys had, different types of canvas. So it kind of really played well into just those color pops and uh, it, this really captured the beauty of that ranch. And that really wasn't even the prettiest camp that we had stayed at in that ranch. And for some unknown reason that day, I've never seen one last quite that long. It just seemed like it went on for hours. Might've just been 15 or 20 minutes, but 
we had been washed by the love of God and got to see a masterpiece all at the same time. You know, you've heard the saying, daylight to dark. Well, the next year when we were hired on back out there to go to that ranch, they had probably been in a bad drought as they had seen in a long time. There wasn't green vegetation. There was hardly any leaves on the mesquite trees or them old cottonwoods either because it was just so dry and it had been so windy. Uh, I can remember when we moved to this particular camp uh, the year before, it was so beautiful down there. It was like an oasis. I mean, it was so nice. And when you get there this time, that old windmill is just barely pumping any water down there for them horses to drink. Now, when we set up at camp that night, I remember Rim riding up there nearly when we got to camp. He rode up there beside me in that wagon. He said, Kent, have you seen uh, what I've been seeing? I said, yeah, Rim, I seen him when we come through the gate back there. He said, uh, we ain't gonna say nothing. Well, folks, there was quite a few bear tracks in that old loose dirt that had just blowed up for day after day. They just lay that old paws in there. That night, cowboys usually get 200 yards from the wagon, 300 yards from the wagon. Everybody was pretty close to camp setting up them teepees because they'd seen a little bear sign too. Now, you get all kinds of visitors coming through camp. I've never had a bear just decided he'd take over. I've seen them go around camp. I've never paid them much attention. But every night we were at that camp for three nights, them cowboys stayed pretty close to the fire and the kitchen. So that night when we set up down there in that old camp uh, and we fixed supper, and the next morning we got up and it was uh, pretty warm that morning, probably in the 60s already, but you could just feel it coming. Well, I sort of have this feeling that I get when I know that it's fixing to come one of them good old blowing up miserable dirt storms. But folks, I didn't know how bad it was gonna be. Them cowboys had just rode out after lunch and the wind was already blowing about 35, 40 miles an hour then. And then it hit right after they left. 65, 70 mile an hour breeze straight out of the west, blowing dirt in everything you could see. I can remember just sort of tying stuff down, anchoring that old fly with a hammer, again, driving them stakes further in the dirt just so it wouldn't blow it off. And I looked over there and Shan had her back turned to the wind. And I scooted around there to where I could see, and there was tears coming down her face. And I said, sweetheart, go get in the pickup. Turn that air conditioner on. Cool off a minute. You ain't got to be in this. Well, she looked at me, and she said, this is what we do. We feed cowboys, and we're going to make sure they get fed well, no matter the conditions in which we're cooking in. You know, Mother Nature and all her fury, all her rage at times, but also all her beauty, all her peace, all her sweet little gentle breezes at night that sometimes you get to feel. She's always there. And it's not just affecting me, it's affecting them cowboys that's out there working in it. So either place you're at, the cooking fire or the branding fire, you're dealing with them conditions. But it would be nice at times to just go over there in the teepee pop the recliner back, hit the channel changer, turn on the weather channel and see what was gonna happen the next day. Well, folks, like I've told you many times, an old cook has developed things through the years that's either been passed down or he just realized on how to tell the weather, what's gonna happen. You know, I can remember being on a ranch one time in Seymour, Texas, and we had just got set up and the man that owned that ranch, old Rob Stewart, he called out there and he said, Kent, there's a tornado warning down here by my house. He said, uh, they're going to be a tornado. You and Shan need to get out of there. I ain't going to be no tornado here. Look at them birds sitting in them trees. They ain't left yet. And Shan was, she was scared. Rob was thinking that I didn't know what I was talking about. The next morning when they come out to camp, it blowed all the shingles off his house, but it didn't blow none off my house where I was at because what? I was paying close attention to the signs that Mother Nature give me. You know, you can also always tell that too. Like you got a branding fire built or even a cooking fire. And even when that old smoke is coming out the top of that pipe, you'll see that smoke come back down and stay lower to the ground because of low pressure. You know the weather's fixed to change. Something's gonna happen. Smoke will lay closer to the ground when the weather's about to change. But it, I always really could tell too when I was on them ranches like in November and December, you'd see everything get really busy. I mean, like the birds, it'd be so thick coming around camp, picking up every little old crumb that they could find. Everybody would be just as busy as they could be. 
and I'd see one of them caterpillars every once in a while, them old woolly worms, and the rings that they'd have on them, and the amount of hair that they had sticking off their back, I'd say, hup, boys, better break out them long handles in the next couple of days. Things are fixing to happen, they are. But you always knew too, even ahead of that. You could check back in the early fall. Was a wasp nest close to the bottom of the ground? The closer a wasp nest is to ground level, the colder it's gonna be that winter. One other thing that's always really a telltale sign that you know the weather is really fit to change and it really, I've seen it more in the spring than I have in the fall. Uh, Y'all got them spider webs? You know, uh, there's some out here, but a spider got to be pretty gifted if he gonna string one between them trees out there. But when you get in some thicker cover and them spider webs are like everywhere, you know, a lot of times I've seen them spiders abandon that web. And where do they want to be? On the wall of a teepee or inside on one of them walls that I got around the cook fire and stuff like that. They know that weather's coming. They think, hey, we better get somewhere safe. Cookie's got a really good place up there. It's got central heat and air. But also another one always in the spring that I always check every day, even in the summertime, early summer, red ants. Now you find you a red ant bed. You find it sometime this summer, and I want you to go out there. Things is just going normal. Hey, it's gonna be a great day. But if you go out there and them red ants is carrying that food to there and then you don't never see them no more for a while, you better get in that Frady hole. Something is fitting to blow up, it is. But you'll always know by just what's on the ground, what's in the air, what's happening around you. The signs are there to tell the weather. I've always used them being a camp cook or even when I was guiding elk hunters. So just pay attention to mother nature. All them weather signs too, and even some more are in that new book, Comfort Food, The Cowboy Way. As I say about that new book, every once in a while step out of that comfort zone to be comfortable. You know, there's some conditions that you may not feel like you're really ideal or you're not hey, this is what I really wanted in life. But step on out there, go for it, go with your heart. You're gonna get so much of a reward out of it in the long run that you're gonna think, hey, I should have done this a long time ago. Whatever you're doing, give it all you got. You all the time, you have to weather the storm to get to the rainbow. We hope that y'all have enjoyed this. It gives you a little insight and a little backup history to really what went on in some of these pictures. But folks, it's all about just living life and getting the most out of it. And I know you're gonna do that. Uh, I wanna give a shout out to all y'all who turned out for the book signings, everybody that showed up. Uh, it was such a great privilege to go visit all these cities and meet all these fans that we have. Because as I tell you all the time, we do have the best fans in the world. It is with great pride, honor, and my privilege to tip my hat to all the servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept old Gloria flying over camp. Now the rest of you, come on in here. I'm gonna give you a little hug. I'm so glad we had this time together to share a little cup of coffee. In fact, I'll even pour you one for the road. God bless you each and every one. I'll see you down the trail.